fun to take, take music and our songs from that era and that part of our lives. And, you know, we're not really updating them. We're staying true to them. It's, it's, it's fun to have that perspective. Don't's Cult Magazine welcomes our old friend, Sergio Vega. How are you doing today, man? Doing well, Keith. How are you today? I am so well. I'm so good. On this Thursday when we're chatting, uh, obviously a lot of stuff going on in the world, a lot of stuff going on in your career. You know, First and foremost, I hope you're well, your partner, your family, your friends, because this is an insane, crazy time. And I always don't, I don't, never want to lose that human part of all this, that even though you're an artist and I'm, I love talking to you about music and anything else you want to share, we're all just people trying to human, you know? Likewise, Keith. I mean, these are, these have been, we're, we're all living through one of the, the most tumultuous times in history. And, and there's, uh, everyone has a lot going on personally. There's a lot going on globally. So more, more important than ever to be kind to each other and to be, to be available for each other. Right. Kindness is in short <laughs> supply sometimes. I'd like to think that the pandemic, at least the start of it, the real heart of it. Uh, I was still living in Brooklyn at the time, and uh, I like to think that it taught us some lessons about humanity. I also think about the political unrest of that year and the ongoing issues with that and uh, how it activated people, because I think when they saw the pandemic and uh, it just hopefully something sparked in people. I know uh, hippies, old hippies like to take credit that peace and love changed the world in 67 in the summer of love, but you know, I think it, it probably takes a little more radical uh, events to, to make people really want to change and speak up for change. You know, the things that I think on a personal level that uh, these times I've brought the past couple of years um, has been an appreciation for one for like kind of community and being around each other, the social activities, you know, like, um, and also for people's, for people's personal boundaries for where people are and what people how people are living in their lives i've seen a lot of people make uh career changes and do things during this time because you look at time you look at things differently when you when you're seeing how the fra the fragility of of the world and and our environment things that seem so solid you know um just can out of out of with due to circumstances beyond anyone's control can can really dissolve quickly so it's like how it changed, I think, for uh, quite a few people, what they wanted to do with their time and how they wanted to invest their time. And they appreciate it a lot more now. And I think that if you look, you know, trying to make lemonade out of lemons, you know, like that's kind of what I saw. Beautifully said. Time is the one resource we cannot make more of or get back. So choose wisely <laughs> what you do with your time. Please, everybody, be thoughtful because, you know, I... I often feel like, you know, you can't, I can't, I personally cannot, maybe it's my anxiety or whatever, but I can't afford to waste time. I want to be, I want to be present and I want to do and create and make and mm -hmm. help all the bands I can help with my platform and do the best I can in my career when I'm not doing Ghost Cult. So that's how I spend my time. I try to be very thoughtful. Mm -hmm. I hope everyone else is too. We cannot get things back. Make better choices. <laughs> yeah. Listen to great music. What? Look at great art. Mm -hmm. live in the moment, all these things, wise words. You know, yeah. try to add to the conversation in terms of like creative endeavors, you know, like whatever that may be. <laughs> exactly. And it could be anything. There's so many things. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you know, we're talking on the precipice. You just left Deftones after an amazing run in the band. Uh, first and foremost, thank you for everything you did with the band. Just personally going back well before Deftones as a fan of yours in the New York hardcore scene and all your bands and all your projects. Uh, when you came into the band, I was personally super excited because, you know, obviously uh, initially when, you know, Chi had his accident uh, as, a, as a major fan, you know, it was very devastating to the fan base. And you came in and you were really like a bomb. You really helped be just with your playing and your performance and your spirit. And uh, just from the bottom of my heart, thank you for what you have given to Deftones and Deftones fans with just every ounce of your being because, uh, you know, it's hard to lose somebody. It was hard for those guys to lose their brother out of the band and out of their life when he passed. And uh, I never forgot that, and I never will. Yeah, and and thank you. And I'm I'm forever appreciative of <clears throat> the opportunity to be uh, help. You know, to to people who are dear to me. We have been friends since 1995. You know, since the first Warped Tour, 
she and I were homies. You know, we have like a really cool bond in that. Um, the reason he was playing Fender Bases was because he had seen me, you know, kick one across the stage with quicksand, stayed in tune, picked it up. We had we had an admiration for each other. So there was always that. And um, I always felt like well, when I got the call, you know, that was how I found out. And it, and it's tragic. And, you know, it's always been about putting my best foot forward in, in an awkward situation. I didn't know exactly what I was stepping into. And I was uh, just there to to provide you know so as i as i came in i got more details about the, the specifics of the circumstances and you know it only it only further galvanized me to want to like you know provide the best that i could of course of course and uh again just forever grateful and uh fans out there who are deftones fans may be watching this please go if you're not aware uh, buckle up for Chi, One Love for Chi organizations, donating money and also promoting. They just put out a vinyl of Chi's poetry albums. Please go check that out. Uh, yeah, he did like a series of live performances that are now on tape and available, you know, tape. Because <laughs> I'm old, I said tape, but, you know, on, on CD and digital. And you can mm -hmm. go check those out and support the cause and, and continue to keep his memory and his performances and, and beauty that he put into the world alive. Yeah, and my love to his family and to his spirit. You know, yesterday was the anniversary of his passing. I and, know, man. I know. It's so it's you know, so hard. Yeah, <laughs> and that, you know, it's like I uh, my partner in Ghost Cult, Omar. Shout out to Omar, who you also know and knows you. I, you know, he always says, like, let's make sure we celebrate the living as much as we want to remember people who've passed away. And we had two members of our staff pass away in the last seven, oh, eight months. Yeah. It's been brutal. Uh, not to lie, just one recently and one last summer. It's been hard for us. But, uh, you know, remember them living, remember them alive and, and mourn, of course, but don't like, you know, we want to bring that spirit of their, what they accomplished and, you know, what they gave us, you know, as sad as we are that they're gone. And it's the same thing with she or Chester Bennington, whose birthday just passed or anyone out there. Uh, you know, we've lost a lot of greats. We continue to lose a lot of our legends and heroes. So, you know, be thankful again. Time can't get it back. Be thankful for what we have. Yeah, and people are losing friends and family members, loved ones, you know, and mm -hmm. like for every for every public person that we've lost, they also have a, a families and they have friends and they have people, you know, these things have a lot of impact and they have, they resonate. And yeah. um, you know, so to 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 come into that environment, you know, for people that I care about, you know, was like, you know, it was like myself and Nick Rascalinix coming in, essentially, you know. Uh, I had known them already since 95, but um, coming in to that was like, you know, really, really wanted to, be, you know, to bring it. Mm. Yeah, I just want to just uh, for for another point about the departure from Deftones, I want to commend you. Uh, I think you've always been who you are in real life since I got to know you first in real life and on the Internet, on social media. You are who you are. I think it's, you know, some people are putting on their best life for the camera or for Insta, but you are who you are. I think you are statement about leaving was very kind and professional and considerate that you know wasn't ugly it was this is the facts and i'm moving on to do other things i think you answered it really lovely and it's a it's a skill it's or a gift because it's not natural a lot of people go right to the base emotions or anger or whatever the situation caused but mm -hmm. you, you know i thought you handled it beautifully and again not unlike anything else you've done you live djing stuff on twitch or whatever oh, like you. you know you are who you are it's um it, it it was not easy. It was not desired, you know. But it was um, uh, going back to going back to just the, the times that we're in and what's going on. I felt like over the past couple of years, I'm um, in through conversations with my loved ones and my my wife, especially just the idea of being more available and transparent. Like coming from the hardcore scene, there's a sense of of uh, networking and connectivity. But there isn't the extra level that that what uh, is brought by social media, where you have the opportunity to to actually have people get to know you a little bit better. And doing Twitch uh, was was an opportunity for people to to get a sense, you know, of my interests, of of my beliefs. And um, in um, when the departure, you know, my departure from Deftones happened, it was it was about a year ago. And it was, you know, it was just the idea that not to make a statement, similarly to how I came into the band. And 
um, but with the with the posting of a of a picture as a quartet, you know that started to lead to a lot of speculation, a lot of thoughts, and and in keeping with the idea of, of transparency and, and people, you know, just just like people getting to know you and know what's happening, you know, it, it behooved me to to just really say, hey, this is just what happened, you know, this is what's going on, uh, especially in light of you know when you have people who invest a lot of time and a lot of energy into something and they're kind of like what's going on and and then they start to you know like um people fill blanks with a narrative or with 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 speculation and and it's it, it wasn't anything too crazy or so serious and rather than have people think the wrong thing in regard to me or quicksand even you know it was just like hey just just say something it certainly wasn't easy to, to, to... yeah naturally and uh you know again you invested uh, many many years and your whole heart and soul into the project. And obviously, best of luck to those guys. They're about to kick off a new tour. I'll catch yeah, them next uh, week in San Francisco exactly. with Gojira. Best of luck to them. I, I, I like how, you know, like not the most pleasant experience, not the most fun thing you could talk about, but I think you put it out there on Front Street. You very, again, very much who you are all the way through always and um, much respect on that front. And, you know, again, just again, they're going to continue to go play music you helped make for a long time. Uh, this yeah. has been a great era for the band. They mm -hmm. have many, I mean, these several records in a row that are all incredible uh, in your tenure. So, you know, you have nothing to be ashamed of except to be proud. I know the fans don't always understand. There's a whole, I'm, I'm very fond of saying it's the music business, not the music friendship. And sometimes the friendship suffers, but you know, business, the music business is is harsh and uh, unforgiving. <clears throat> yeah, and and again, it's it's not it's not something that is overly complicated or dramatic or or even personal. It um, and you know, I did I did read comments and uh, how you know, and I think overwhelmingly people got it, but some people didn't quite understand. You know, like the the nuances of it. I mean, but it's just, it was just very simple. You know, I, I had come into the band during during a really intense period. And, you know, with everything that happened to Chi, with the state of where Eros was unfinished and kind of looking like it wouldn't be released. Um, and Nick and I came in and it was kind of like under the impression that, all right, Eros is, is not going to be released in any form. It's not finished. Uh, there was talk of the band just kind of like parting ways with the label. And to do Nick and everyone, and my understanding is, is that they took severance money and used that to fund Diamond Eyes. So with all of the intensity of, of what was going on, you know, like it was a, a charge, you know, there's, there's, there's friendship, there's mourning, there's, there's uncertainty. And, um, you know, Nick and I as new components and that, that explosion kind of resonated throughout my entire tenure. And it was, a uh, it's something that I really, really appreciate. You know, appreciate to be able to provide um, to provide something for people and friends. You know, in a time of need. And again, grateful. Thank you so much. Uh, of course, you have whole other career and many other projects to celebrate mm -hmm. and talk about. Quicksand just put out a banger of a record. You guys haven't toured a humongous amount, but a little bit at the end of last year mm -hmm. on the new record and got in. Another homie, Stephen Brodsky of Cave In and Old Man Gloom and Converge and a million other things. Oh, and yeah. he's like you in a, and Walter in a million bands. I don't know how you guys sleep or function doing so much music, which is great. But, uh, you know, obviously, hopefully more time for quicksand tours now. Hopefully some, some solo stuff. I know you're doing a lot of producing on the horizon more than you've done recently because of time commitments. So, uh, you know, obviously the future is very bright for you. No, no oh, sadness. Here. I mean, no, yeah. like there, there isn't. I mean, the, the truth is, is that like, is that I'm a, um, in my day to day life, you know, like the past year or so has been really focused on the things that you're talking about. It's been, you know, like black quicksand and enjoying the, um, the kind of growth in skill sets that I had over the past, my time with Deftones and with quicksand and as, as a solo artist or a collaborator, you know, really bringing my recording uh, skills to the forefront. And um, and the things that um, Quicksand and Deftones as, as counterparts really inform me in different ways that are super cool. And, and being able to have the, the 
kind of plant seeds on either camp with the things that each one has that I really that I really revere. You know, I get to take that and use that for myself. You know, like I've been having probably one of the most creative and exciting runs um, this past year in my life. Like quicksand is super. I'm so stoked. And um, doing a tour with Steve, having him play live with us and, you know, like valuing as a person, as a player, as, and, you know, allowing us to, to, to be fuller, you know, has been a uh, joy. He's a really, he's a really great guy. And, and then, and on the side note, you know, or in addition to that, doing projects where like I'm writing for someone in or writing for in situations and collaborations where they don't necessarily need to to um exist on stage you know like but they are there has been really cool because there's a, you know i feel like a lot of momentum and, and positivity about and confidence you know so it's a really exciting time awesome i'm so pleased and and i love quicksand actually i think there's a huge anniversary coming up i don't know if you have anything planned or it's being talked about because again still we're still coming through this pandemic times but uh man manic compression has a huge anniversary coming soon uh which <laughs> I, I, it was like a humongous record for me but uh, slip and manic compression huge records for me in my formative time and uh when i was still playing in bands and uh just uh monumental records man for the scene you know no oh, thank you and that, you know like um i think uh it's fun to have perspective on those things because you know i think with anything you do when you're right on top of it you can think of all the things that oh i would have done this i should have done this and um to listen to things like so far removed is fun to appreciate them and play you know like even playing the songs now whereas some people can say oh, i'm sick of these sick of doing x y and z but for me it's like it's interesting and as a band it's interesting to see like oh wow like this is where our heads were at then and this is how we're representing it now, I think that we're better players now and appreciate uh, each other. We have better tones, better everything. It's fun to to take music and our songs from that era and that part of our lives. And, you know, we're not really updating them. We're staying true to them, you know, but uh, it's, it's, it's fun to have that perspective. Nice. I know in the uh, before times, before the world shut down, you were doing like a ton of DJing and parties and dance parties mm -hmm. and secret show up at a speakeasy and and bring the crates of records and jam out and then into the night um obviously that changed but you brought that over into the digital and social media realm yeah. i don't know if it's something you're going to continue to do forever or take a break and come back or make some original music yourself i know you did that too so i don't know if that also factors into the future but i would love to hear if it does because i was really uh refreshing and you know really entertaining and fun and I, again like you have you're having a lot of fun i think the fans are having a lot of fun everybody have a drink go watch sergio spin Thanks. you know you were having fun i think it was you know a real treat no, i took that very seriously and thank you like uh everything i kind of i dive in so it's like as a dj i was kind of like put a lot of effort and years into to being like a technical dj and someone who was good who can mix and blend and scratch and all that but like the the initial uh impetus for me doing it was to was as a songwriter you know it's like i want to tap into like that kind of phenomenon that makes people want to their bodies move before they um are aware even what they're listening to and sometimes it's just because you're kind of caught up in the group kind of high mind and you're just moving whatever but i just started to realize there were certain uh, tempos and certain things that kind of were associated with certain times and certain aesthetics and and that was really, that really influenced um, not so much like the vibe, but not so much the, the, the like riffs or something or the song ideas I would have, but they would influence the tempos and the, and the touch and the feel. And I think that that was a really positive thing. So in doing that a lot, it really, one kept, keeps you, keeps a person abreast of a lot of genres because I'm an open format DJ. And, but also it, uh, it's something that I can go back and then like when I pick up a guitar without, I'm not saying, oh, I want to do a song like this, but like the idea is in, in the pocket of things that are, that are hot, you know, and that's a, it's a good starting point always, especially, you know, building up from the groove is always going to, you know. Word. I, I think a lot of people don't realize like it's weird. And, and I know that New Yorkers, 
we always talk about how you know the world revolves around us and it kind of does uh even though i i don't live in new york anymore i'm never gonna not be a new yorker uh and of course i hope everybody you know we just had this crazy shooting thing i hope everybody's safe out there the world is falling apart but we got to keep it together but I, i think people don't realize how many different converging art scenes and music scenes were happening in the 80s where like you had the birth of hardcore new york hardcore especially first and second wave bands that were just still continue to you know reverberate and be essential and at the same time there's like a dance music scene that emerged a dj scene that came out of the clubs in new york the same clubs limelight roxy uh pyramid these same places where metal and punk bands played also were dance clubs and Mm -hmm. sometimes you would go for the metal or punk show and stay and watch people dance and just kind of hug the bar and check out the cute goth girls and guys. And, you know, like there was a crazy time. The, the, the East village and the West village, especially were such a insane epicenter of art and talent. And you came from that spirit and you Mm -hmm. came from that time. And, uh, you know, I just, I still kind of like, I, you know, you'll never be like another unique boutique. No one will know what we're talking about or the, you know, the cube is back now, but like, no one will know what it was like to skate at the cube and hang out and get off the six train from the Bronx or this, you know, somewhere else in the city and see people skating and hanging out. That was our, the the core of our earth at that time. Man. It's true. And I think that um, in a way, uh, social media and the internet at large has kind of created the same uh, opportunity for cross genre, cross belief, just convergence. And, and so I, where I can see an open-mindedness now occurring like for people everywhere. But at the time pre that, you know, it, it, um, you have the opportunity in cities like New York to, to just get hit with a lot of, a lot of disparate things that don't seem to make sense together. And you have a chance for them to make sense. And these people all really kind of hung out. Like if you look at old Blondie videos, which are even, you know, like before my time was like, Walkers and punks and rappers and this and this and artists and they were all because there's not that many places to go. And, you know, and it kind of now talking to you reminds me of conversations that I have with my wife who grew up in Mexico and she was like, things weren't so factionated because there weren't that, you know, it's like, they were, where are you going to go? Like, we're all kind of mixed up anyways. As long as you're cool, you're cool. And I was like, you make me realize that that is, you know, a similar, you know, that's a similar environment that, that I actually come from and you came from. It builds, it builds, uh, Gives you more to draw from. Yeah. No yeah. doubt, no doubt. I uh, I do remember. There's a story that I like to tell that's on our YouTube channel about like my first hardcore show. I was never truly a hardcore kid, but I had a lot of friends in the scene, and I got dragged to a lot of matinees. And my first hardcore show was Burn and Mucky Pup at CB's. Oh, wow. But like that was the year before metalheads and punks were cool. Was it before SOD? Really played out, even though they had the record out, and it was like still crossover. And punk and hardcore, there was still like, I'll stand on my side of the room, my arms folded. And if I see a long hair, I'm going to punch you. And it was legit. And then like a year later, we were all friends. I don't know what happened, but I'm really glad it did. And uh, I somehow missed, I was just a little too young to miss like the super violent punk shows, uh, the fun violent shows I got to see. But the like, okay, the guys from Boston are here with chains and razor blades, <laughs> run. Um, and we had some of that in the city too. It was a wild time. Um, you know, I love, Warriors is a fun movie, but there's a whole other dark side to the shit uh, from back then. Uh, but that's not the main thing. The music was the main thing. And the, you know, the common bonds of brotherhood was the main thing and sisterhood and friendship. And uh, it's funny how all these things, again, like I don't, I, I can't speak for other cities, but they converged in our town like in no other way and really opened up our eyes and our minds. And I'm glad that I grew up where I did. Yeah, I feel like that was a time. And um, one of the things I think about over time is that like a lot of them were people who are actually, you know, who came in from other places. So like New York is like, is a port city. And and while we're talking about the excellence of New York at that time, the specialty of it, it's actually not all New Yorkers, you know, who are doing it. You know, so that's one of my favorite things, one of the things that's been coming up recently a lot is that um, the idea that it's people from other places and it, you know that come and shape a city. You know they come in and they're not they're not they have a vision for what it is, romanticism for what it is, and they have the energy to make it happen. And um, they, it's always about it's always about people bouncing back and forth. You know how they change things, how they bring their aesthetic, and you know how that helps 
a place not to be stuck. So uh, yeah, it's a, it's always it, it was special to to see those kinds of things kind of happen and to to be informed by it. You know, I by no means was a player in that, but I was certainly a fan and and it's you know see even my first shows on my first records that I bought that were like I thought were punk were goth because I I didn't have anyone showing me the way I was just reading jackets and like oh that looks cool and I would take my allowance and go buy a record at Booker Bob's and uh, dude I love Bleaker Bob's so much there was a tattoo studio in the back at one point where they were given definitely tattoos to like underage people no offense to anybody who's mad about that they I got all my first metal shirts at Bleaker Bob's certainly a bunch of stickers and patches there I, that place was unbelievable so great Mm -hmm. I think I bought the first white zombie cassette there from Caroline, like yeah. with the hand drawn art from Rob and Sean. But uh, yeah, so many fun things. I I can tell you like we could go all day, and I'm gonna give you back your day in a second. I just have a few more for you. But uh, I I so I go back and forth between like which place that's closed now do I miss the most, Castle Heights or the Bank, because <laughs> they're definitely different vibes. Uh, or wetlands or something like, you know, that some places are still there and some are gone. But like, you know, uh, there's there's definitely a culture that kind of went out and some of it is still, you know, hanging in there and some of it is gone. But um, yeah, think, things, things are always churning and always turning. So like for me, you know, it's about about appreciating things, never getting too attached, mm. you know, just kind of saying like, hey, it's still around us and that that's for the change. And it's kind of it's occupying in certain ways, different spaces, you know, and it's occupying different cities, but we have the most access to it. And our our thing is like, um, to me, everything is anyone who's creative is just never being stuck. Appreciate, look look to the past, look to the future, look look at what's around you and have fun with it. You know, so like for me now, doing projects and exploring things that are exciting to me and having opportunities to, to um, for me being music, based you know like to, to say all right here's a here's a, 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 a an opportunity or an in, or a context that didn't exist before that is new and that has that kind of excitement similar to things that we can relate to in, at, at that era you know it's not the same but it is the same it, it, it's exciting it's new it's fresh it's undefined and and taking it and being open to take advantage of that is always kind of cool and, and being cross you know like cross everything like so aesthetic disciplinary like being able to say oh from looking at this movie i can get this sound from, and not being not that you're like i have synesthesia but just like <laughs> just that you know so like an example is like um is like uh i'm hanging out at home and my wife is looking um at youtube she sees the video of this artist from argentina who's doing these kind of series of one-off songs you know he's a producer He's doing one-off songs with people and he has like a series. And then she's like, you know, wow, I could see you doing something like that. You're kind of, you know, sitting up here. And I was like, well, no way, that, that fits my personality, you know. And through some conversations, you know, like I'm thinking about just us brainstorming. You know, like I wind up calling uh, Chris Enriquez, who's uh, the drummer. Yeah, okay, good. So I know Chris, Chris, Chris from uh, Spotlights and a million other bands and cool. a brand new solo project. Congrats, Chris. Exactly. So we have this idea, you know, like the... So the idea is born uh, from my wife watching this uh, this artist, you know, producer, his name is Rap. And it's like, hey, we can do these like single based kind of things with people. And it's like, wow, that'd be really fun to just get with an artist, like a singer and do a song, you know? And we started reaching out to people and uh, we have a couple that we've done, you know, where like one is completely done. And, you know, we're having, we want to have fun, like kind of gamifying how we release this and how how people we know who uh, that artist may be. You know, so we have one done, one three quarters done. And then uh, and the only name that, I, that I'll reveal that we're working with right now is we, we started uh, last week, we talked to Keith Buckley and we started working on a track together. And so the idea to work with him and, you know, myself and Chris is, and without the pressure of like, oh, we're gonna, we're gonna build up a project. It's like, we're gonna just, you know, to go back to the to the diamond I was over and, and with Nick Westin and she said something about like, we're gonna take this energy and capture lightning in the bottle. And that's always something that I cherish that that visual. So like um, you know, when we with this project when we talk to someone like let's say with Keith, 
we just got like that hype on FaceTime. We're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, all right, and run right to your instruments and like, you know, and and start to work on something. So that's kind of to me an example of taking the spirit of seeing the world around you, things that don't seem to relate to you, and uh jumping on it and and being open and being positive and being creative. That is hella exciting, man. I know whatever Keith does next is gonna be incredible. Chris is wonderful as a person and as a player and musician. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. I imagine Again, you're so well respected and liked. I, I'm sure your phone book, your your you know, we don't have black books anymore, but your phone book is probably like overflowing with people who would love to work with you. Just as we wrap this up, man, I, I, again, I'm so grateful and you're so open and, and candid and I really appreciate that. I, I know that you've in the past had your hand in a lot of other businesses and uh, just if there's anything you want to promote that you're still working on outside of music, I'm certainly happy to link it in the description and share with everybody what you're working on. But you always seem to have something going on that's exciting well i like uh thank you thank you and i i like to uh i've gotten really into the idea of kind of trying to maximize things and like just everything you were talking about earlier you know you want to get the most out of you want to get the most out of things you want to get the most out of that and i've really had a lot of uh um inspiration from the way that uh you know my wife has a has an uh acting of life you know why do one thing if you can get five out of it if you're going to go to a place and do something that's going to be other secondary and tertiary and, and things that you can do to, to maximize that opportunity and experience. And, you know, she, you know, so we started doing like a vegan Instagram, you know, because the fact that I've been vegan for 35 years now, most of my life and, um, and having the opportunity to, to kind of take that and, and not try to push it on people, but to like, you know, Hey, showcase it and highlight it. Has been fun and, and it kind of sometimes it helps steer our day when we're on tour and traveling we can find vegan restaurants and and put it up on our on our instagram which is called pinche vegano and uh which means fucking vegan <laughs> <laughs> and you know so that it's it's, a, it's an example of kind of like taking the things in your life and that that are seemingly just whatever or random and but or or maybe just a, a part of your daily life and elevating it into something that's a creative and fun endeavor Awesome, man. Well, again, whatever you're working on, we're going to be checking it out and keep our ear to the ground for new music and any of the things you're working on. Sergio Vega, man, always a pleasure and an honor to hang out and chat with you. Thank you for sharing your story with us and just everything you've given music for your whole career. And uh, since you're a young, a young dude, thank you so much. And thanks for having me <laughs> now with Ghost Cult. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. You have a right. wonderful